Well, for heaven's sake. So good morning, everyone, wherever you are. And I can see that by my um, um, guests in the uh, green room, we're everywhere from Ireland to India to Belize to California to Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. So <laughs> we're, we've covered uh, um, some ground here. So I have to look away for a moment because I had my notes up here and all of a sudden they just disappeared on me. So I have to just bring them back. So um, this is the Being Your Own CEO uh, success circle. We get together because we enjoy each other's company and we like exchanging ideas and information. And we we uh, we enjoy helping each other, which is what's been going on before we started the broadcast here this morning. Great to have uh, some uh, some people, knowledgeable people, on the other end uh, to uh, tell you what they're seeing, etc. So um, it's great to uh, to have uh, some online friends who can do that for you. My name is Lowell Ann, and I've been in business since 1996, helping people get where they want to go. So uh, I did want to um, review our operating principles since we had quite a lengthy conversation about that last time. And uh, there were some suggested additions, and I wanted you all to see and hear how those additions come through as I remind everyone of our operating principles. So the first one was one that I began with, relationships before business. And you can get everything in life and business if you help enough people get what they want. And I guess that was my addition as well. It's a, a quote from Zig Ziglar. And then I found another really neat quote that I thought was useful from Scott Stratton. Uh, business is built on relationships. Make building them your business. So that's kind of base, uh, uh, two sides of the same coin almost uh, with those two. We stand for positive possibilities and keep an open mind. And we deliver our message with integrity. That was added by Sue Ferreira some time ago. And then Nathan uh, added, we deliver what we say we will deliver. We never sell anything. We are not prepared to deliver impeccably. And, um, um, and th um, that sort of means exceeding expectations even. And that was something that Alana added. And then Jay added something that I thought was uh, was so neat. It was the Moz uh, code, and he said it was T A G F E E, transparent, authentic, generous, fun, empathetic, and exceptional. Man, I, that's that seems to say it all, doesn't it? So a couple of reminders, um, uh, technical reminders. Uh, if we keep our, our um, mics on mute, unless you're speaking, and that's just in case your dog barks or the doorbell rings. <laughs> and uh, uh, it also means that we need to remember that it's kind of one voice at a time. And sometimes we can get into... Um, uh, excited conversation and we it, it, we have feel this urge to jump in and and uh, that that sometimes will work face to face but it doesn't work here because the technology only will listen to one at one at a time and a third one that I added was please try to add comments to the uh, video comment plus uh, comment stream which uh, you will see on my website so uh, for those in the room here, I don't know if you're able to, uh, to bring up the website so you can put comments there. Um, but if we have something to share, it will be important for us to put 
the shareable things over into the comment stream. So now it's time for introductions. Please uh, say your name and I guess I did say where everybody was from, but I guess I didn't say who was from where. So uh, say something about where you are and what you do and tell us what's going on for you in this um, season because it is a it is a more or less a holiday season isn't it for a lot of people so um this morning uh rather than going with who came first etc i think i'll just start on my left which is probably your right so alana how would you like to introduce yourself this morning this afternoon this evening for you <laughs> Yes, it is. It's about 5.15 here in Ireland. Good evening, everyone. And my name is Alana. I live in Ireland and I have two websites, Techie Travel Bits and EmptyNestersBlog.com. And uh, I guess want to wish everybody happy holidays and a lot of people are visiting with family. I know here we have Stephen's Day, which was yesterday. So that was a holiday here. Mm -hmm. Lots of um, visiting going on over here and lots of places are closed and I kind of enjoy that because it's so more like a family affair as opposed to a commercial affair. So that's me. Welcome here. Nice to see you again and uh, best wishes to you. Thank you. So Barbara, now you'll need to unmute yourself first. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I'm uh, Barbara, <laughs> and um, I, I'm with my mother. I've been with my mother for a few days in um, San Juan Capistrano, which is not all that far away. Um, and um, I've been spending Christmas with her. But as far as my business goes, I'm um, trying to complete my um, SEO certificate, and I'm on the final course of this Coursera thing and um, that just started back again today I mean yesterday and then um, uh, oh I actually got a client to work on for SEO um, with, um, the person that I'm working with is also promoting my um, website Pup Corner so she said she's got a few more lined up too so that sounds good <laughs> right on <laughs> so only a short while to go before you finish your course and uh, yeah. how, how nice is that to have um, have a client to uh, to work uh, to take to uh, use that knowledge uh, on right away that's really important yeah I mean um, yeah because it just because I'm working with this person and, and she's actually a coach also and and helps people start their business up and then um, and then she's helping me with the actual promotion marketing on, on uh, my pup corner like puppy yeah. <laughs> it's a dog thing <laughs> yeah you could you could almost uh, think that you were saying pub corner and oh I, no it's not I, that <laughs> I wonder what she's doing at the pub yeah. How about barfly? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, it's uh, it's good that you uh, you've got. It's nice to see you've got a new computer going, and your trans yeah. your transmission is really good. So um, making progress. Welcome. Finally here. got it all together. <laughs> yeah. It took me ten years. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, yeah. Merry Christmas everybody <laughs> well thank you very much and the same to you yeah oh, thank you <laughs> so uh bill you're um you're the next one uh in the um in the little strip down here so oh forgot to unmute um yeah i'm bill graham i'm hailing from belize today um we're enjoying christmas here although it's uh not what we're uh we're used to. Um, Christmas could easily pass us by here because being from Canada, we were used to uh, getting cold, a little bit of snow on the ground, and 
a ton of commercialism, um, whereas we don't get any of that in Belize. It's uh, more of a family day here, and uh, most children here, if they get anything for Christmas, it's uh, usually a small dollar store trinket. So it's not, uh, it's more of a family thing here and uh, uh, than it is. But at any rate, my website is Bill Does Belize. Um, I offer information, the unbelievable truth uh, to folks who might be looking to move to Belize. And uh, that's what I do. And thank you for having me. I, I, I'm guilty. I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> so it's very nice to have you, Bill. And uh, it's also nice to hear that uh, Christmas is, is um, of the uh, uncommercial sort that uh, where you were in, where you are. Um, I could, I could go on a rant right now, um, but I think I won't. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, <laughs> One of the things we learned here is that we live on what we need rather than what we want. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's been kind of a welcome change from the stress, the stress of trying to work 12 hours a day to buy that next new shiny item. Um, so it's uh, culturally been, uh, been a wonderful change that way for us. And we have cows outside the window. I was going to say, how did that happen? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Bill, I, I mean, I, uh, I find myself doing the same thing, trying to, trying to rearrange my life so that I'm um, focusing on what I need and not what I want. Or I, I guess I'm finding my wants are um, diminishing as time goes on. And I, I wonder if that isn't just partially our stage in life as well. So it could be culture and it could be age and it could be a combination of everything. So, yeah. So welcome here. It's nice to have you here. And um, um, it's um, I, you can always enjoy a white Christmas just visually without having to uh, enjoy it in reality. So, <laughs> Well, the ground is white here in some places. I mean... <laughs> It's it's sand though, not snow. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I we haven't uh, we're not having uh, snow here now. It's just rain, 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 rain. So the the snow happened um, two weeks ago. <laughs> so anyway, so Roland, what about you? Are you um you're you're definitely not seeing any snow. So what's going on with you? No, we, thank you. Uh, we're not seeing any snow, but we see occasionally some cloudy days and stuff. We actually had rain coming into Christmas. And uh, the unique thing about this particular Christmas is that this is the first year in my wife and my history that we got to spend Christmas Eve and Christmas Day together and all the days before together and she was she's been off work because of the disability for her uh, prep for uh, hip surgery so it's not the most pleasant thing but we're actually spending the days together <laughs> and so it's the first time we've ever done that and I'm just loving it oh isn't that nice right on well it's not nice that she's prepping for for surgery <laughs> but <laughs> um, actually, actually it is because it's going to be a relief uh, for something that she's been dealing with for, for a decade or so and it just came to a head this year and it's very disability you know disabling mm -hmm. to deal with your hip I mean to be in constant pain and that's going to go away very soon well so, I but, hear good things about having hip surgery um I do too yeah right <laughs> anyway thank you for having me on and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody so a really nice holiday season here in Southern Cal. Well, say something about your business. Business is business. It's going to transform. Uh, it, it's been all about the plug-in and all about Saturday morning marketing smarties. As, as Bill knows, that we, we just kind of gang up on Saturdays and produce a show, and it, he's uh, helping me do something that's uh, 
pretty unique, and I think that everyone needs a comment tracker if you're going to do that. But mainly, it's just having another person focusing on the subject matter and on the process of what's going on to make the show of higher quality. So I really appreciate having Bill with me on the show. And uh, the plugin is coming along. Uh, it's it's been uh, developmental for months now, and uh, we broke it last week. We're trying to produce the uh, next generation of the plugin. We were trying we were trying to incorporate Facebook share buttons in the plugin, and the plugin said, "Nope, I, we're we're not going to put up with that," and uh, decided not to work. So we're fixing that and uh, determining whether we can add the Facebook or not. We have tested the uh, Google Plus share buttons, and so they work. We've also uh, done some other things that we're, we're going to be adding to it. The, uh, basically, the, the real progressive concept is that the info area below your video will be submittable by simply building a WordPress post. I mean, whatever you want to put there, whatever shape, size, and so forth you want to do, it's just basically like doing a blog post. And it's going to insert. So it's it's pretty cool stuff. And the monumental change. Okay, I'll, I'll do the, the final plug on my, my concept. The monumental change will be that we're going to work on a database where by using the internal administration, as soon as you click submit to generate your short code, the URL for the chat stream is going to be recorded into a database so we can never lose that again. Well, and it'll never permanently leave again. <laughs> and to me, that makes the whole plugin worthwhile because it makes it evergreen and makes it reliable. So I think I think we're on to something. Right on. Well, I just went through because um, I set everything up yesterday, I think. So I, uh, it's fresh in my mind. Um, when we start broadcasting, I can tell you a couple of things that happened. That you might uh, might find interesting. <laughs> so, uh, so it's uh, great to have you here, and it's great to uh, to be on the experimental uh, track with you. <laughs> so, welcome here. Now, Vivek, what's happening in your world? Um. Yeah. Namaste. My name is Vivek. Um, I am at the moment in India and uh, yeah things happen in a different way here so <laughs> uh, you asked what has been happening uh, I don't know which where to begin so let me not uh, <laughs> go there at all there are too many things happening which are not really relevant, but they have relevance in terms of technology and so on. But uh, yeah, it's it's a topic on its own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, nice to have you here, and thank you for uh, for um, for assisting me. Um, uh, Vivek sort of uh, helped me work out some a uh, couple of technical issues last week that <laughs> I couldn't believe one of them I couldn't believe how simple it was <laughs> somehow <Yeah. laughs> I did, somehow I just didn't see it <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that that's why my tagline is uh... <laughs> simple <laughs> Oh dear, and and uh, that's one of the reasons why it's so uh, having a group of people uh, such as you folks and others who uh, who normally come. Um, uh, it's it's just wonderful to have have us all sort of being resources for one uh, for one another. So what fess up for what, uh, Roland? <laughs> what was this, what was this simple thing that uh, we wake taught you? Oh, I I um I had created a web um um an email a Gmail, a personal Gmail address, and I don't uh, I use my professional one for everything. I've learned how to manage th uh, that, but I needed to have that extra. Gmail because I'm a G Suite person 
and I needed an extra email for another purpose that had to do with my website. And I was finding it so inconvenient having to uh, open this one and close that one and open this one and close that one. And uh, Vivek said, well, just open another one within Chrome. And I, I couldn't figure out how to do that. I looked here and looked there. <laughs> it, was, it was amazingly simple. And it is, it is so much more convenient. I'm just so happy with it. <laughs> so That's happy. enough. He taught me the same thing about six months ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's, it's, um, it, but that's uh, that points back to uh, the value of having a, a group such as this that uh, is able to uh, where we're able to support one another and share what we know and help each other sort of um, become more efficient <laughs> and live a simple life <laughs> to, to use uh, Vivek's uh, uh, moniker. So. Um, and I, uh, I wanted to acknowledge that uh, both Susan, Joy Schlieff, and Heidi um, are, um, um, have other uh, commitments today. Uh, I did get a little message that said um, that they wouldn't be able to attend. So I, I wanted to, um, oh, and plus Andrew uh, Hatchett, he's uh, busily uh, running his um, his uh, user to user this morning. So I I did get some messages from people who uh, normally are here, but um, won't be this morning. And it, it really all has to do with uh, something I think we, we posted somewhere, uh, Vivek, about uh, the fact that um, Sometimes holiday mode for some people holiday mode is is you know just adds a whole lot and um, uh, It becomes much more stressful than uh, getting back into our workday mode <laughs> so but uh, <laughs> It just depends on the, the sort of mood you're in and and speaking of moods uh, I might mention that uh, on the radio this morning as I was making breakfast and um, doing my kitchen things, um, there was a piece that talked about how often uh, on um, this period between Christmas and New Year, a lot of people um, become quite depressed. Uh, and they also sort of um, included children in that, that, um, you know, I, there's such a, a gear up to everything at Christmas time that, you know, once it's over, it's kind of a, um, kind of a drop and um, it, it, yeah, it becomes, um, um, you know, how do I, I guess it, if, you know, if I could just find the energy to move back into my normal existence. Um, and I, I certainly, I have to um, um, self-disclose here this morning. Yesterday, I was, I was in the bucket. I could, I, I, I was trying to think about what I want to do in the, in the coming year and, what uh, what's been working in in the past year and what's not been working and and somehow or other there didn't seem to be anything bubbling to the surface that gave me any energy and um, I went um, went out for a, a very long walk with my special friend and we had lots of conversation and sort of talked that through and so forth. But the interesting thing was I woke up this morning and did my usual um, meditation and my mind would not stop. There were just ideas uh, popping in uh, left, right, and center. <laughs> so, so I feel energized again today. So <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't, I didn't want to run the uh, hangout yesterday or you guys would have been uh, <laughs> wanting to leave. <laughs> so... So this morning, um, I well, last time we talked a lot about uh, looking back on 2016. What uh, what are some of the things that we were really uh, happy that um, happened, and um, 
we didn't we i mean i think we we all kind of barely touched on uh the coming year but we didn't really go there um we had lots of people in the room and it just took up the time and we still went for for an hour and a half so so this morning i thought it would make sense for us to explore the coming year a little bit more and as i thought about it well yep this is the time of year when people make resolutions for the future new year's resolutions which usually don't stick very well <laughs> for a lot of people it's a time for regrouping and refocusing and pardon me also a time for kind of stepping it up a bit so um that's where where my mind went this morning was okay so where to where do we you know what's what's that going to look like for us and i thought it might make sense for us to begin by kind of having a look at what we see as being kind of current trends in a general way um and what we think as a as a result of that might be future trends um i guess the question is what are we noticing out, out there in terms of trends right now so um anybody anybody noticing anything that uh, they feel is is uh, worthy of discussion go ahead roland i um I'm going to bring up the obvious because I think it's going to be uh, something that pretty much is impactful for the next three years. And uh, two years ago, they told us the same thing. In 2014, they were saying by 2017, 60% uh, or 60 something percent of the internet will be consumed on video. And so that's indicative of the fact that video is not even near its threshold yet in infiltrating the internet. It's becoming really popular and very predominant, but technology and the, the essence of personal delivery and um, high engagement as far as the video being, you know, a hundred times better than a blog, so to speak, either a video blog or a video live streaming video is going to become the thing and um i think that this is this is the the wave that we've been predicting that's been bubbling and just kind of brewing a little bit now it's going to actually hit the surf and uh it may not actually hit the surf until 2018 because as much as we talk about the new trends and things it takes forever to people to say okay now i get it now i'm gonna do it and uh, it's going to be a slow process. So right now, we are the educators that are bringing on the concept of video and live streaming for business sake, as well as the another thing that's, uh, that's predominant is video for your business sake does not have to be a high fidelity and integrity production. It does not have to be an expensive thing. And the people on the receiving end, the audience, is very well satisfied with an honest to goodness, uh, nice person on the screen helping you out do things that are that pertain to their the subject of what they need and the subject of what you do. So you do not have to produce a high high production uh, concept for video to be impactful on the internet. Today is when you can do a solopreneur thing, a simple little broadcast for free. Do it well, know what you're talking about, and you don't have to be an, an, a class A broadcaster. Besides, broadcasting is overrated. <laughs> we should be narrow casting. Hmm. So, the, so that's my two and a half cents. So big time video um, video broadcasting. I I am um, I. I've been hearing that all over the place as well. Yeah. Um, because uh, we're seeing um, uh, Twitter is now allowing you to go in and do something. Facebook is uh, is allowing you to go in and do something. And we've always been able to do that this um, uh, here. But um, 
I, I guess I, I, I would expand uh, what you said, uh, Roland, a little bit in, the, in terms of uh, if, if it's live streaming, it it's, uh, seems to be up till now uh, kind of a one-way um, promotion or one-way one -way thing. And I'm, I guess my uh, curiosity uh, going forward is whether there's going to be more kind of collaboration such as what we're doing here. Um, is this, I'm very much aware that, that so what we're doing here is a little bit different from what we're seeing out there. So I'm very curious to know whether, um, whether that video trend will sort of move in that direction. Um, because one way live stream is really just advertising, isn't it? Yeah. So Bill, you, uh, were waving. Yeah, I was going to say, I agree with, uh, with Roland says, I would just question with who they are that is saying this. And I would say that it's the marketers because I noticed this year that, uh, some of the best streaming platforms have gone through tremendous changes. Blab's gone. Mm -hmm. Blab disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, Google Hangouts went to YouTube and took away a lot of the features that we as event producers um, use, used to use. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't disagree with what Roland said. I think uh, the, the social media tripod, um, your website, your social media and video is very strong. And uh, I question whether we're actually following the masses or are we, as Roland said, actually leading the masses because, you know, I don't see this, I don't see this genuine move to people using video for the proper purpose of, you know, building engagement, building authority, um, building communities. I mean, to me, that's the, the huge asset of being able to, to stream publicly around the world is that people get to know you. It's not like they're looking at a yellow page ad, you know, where, where your graphics is what's going to sell you. Uh, it's your personality that sells you here and puts you halfway down that funnel, so to speak, where people already know you and trust you when they uh, seek to do business with you. Mm. Uh -huh. I would like to add to what Bill's saying, uh, it, because he's makes the, the biggest point that he makes to me that that's most impactful regarding the subject is that the 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 salespeople, the marketers, the people who are trying to sell things for other people, they're the ones that are going to invade and be a major part of this wave. So what I see is that it's the same kind of an 80, 20 percentage that we've seen all along that I, I told my buddy the other day and he was like question mark, ding, ding, big question mark above his head. I told him that 80% of what's being generated on the internet is either inaccurate, obsolete, or just flat out false. And so people are trying to sell us something, not because it makes sense to buy it, but because they can sell something to us and make some money. So their incentive is not necessarily a pure incentive. Now, everyone's got to make money, and we all want to sell as much as, much as we can. But the thing is, we have the opportunity to be authentic. I mean, really authentic, not the ones that are just playing with the word and trying to be authentic. You know, there's being authentic, and then there's being real. And um, we can spend a lot of time dealing with the, that concept. But, you know, uh, Teresa de Grobois spoke the other day, and I won't be able to quote her perfectly, but it's basically she said, what is being authentic? And she quoted for a recording that she did in her interview on TED Talks that authenticity is saying the things the, the things that you say are the same as the things that you think. And so you're expressing what's really in your mind and you're not molding what you're thinking so that it could be received a little better, could sell a little bit more or influence people differently from what is just fair and real and just. And I think that's authenticity. And I, I live from that place, or at least I try to. 
I don't think that human beings are maybe capable of being 100% genuine all the time. But I think that uh, with live streaming, it's pretty hard to hide. You cannot hide it. So if someone comes online with a, a video production of any kind and are, they're trying to sell you something, it's going to become very obvious by the end of their pre presentation that, oh, all you're trying to do is get me to spend some money. And as soon as you cross that line with the people, you better be ready and you better be really having them on your side and they better really want your product. Because if they don't, they're going to say, okay, I'm out of here. And when they go, it's going to be more detrimental than if you had never tried to sell them anything in the first place because you just lost a potential future customer. So the, it, it's, a, it's a world where we have to treat our acquaintances and our relationships and our everything differently from yesterday. And it's, it's not a matter of uh, broadcasting and it's not a matter of selling anymore. We just have to integrate with the people and help them where we can. Mm -hmm. And that, it, that's a completely different philosophy. Mm -hmm. Right on. So, um, yeah, we, I think we're, we're all sort of agreeing that um, broadcasting and the video live streaming, et cetera, seems to be something that is expanding. And does uh, anybody else see any other trends that that um, are appropriate for us to think about? What about you, Alana? Do you do you are you seeing anything that you think is um, kind of worthy of um, our attention? I suppose the thing that I have noticed recently is the um, let's say it's. Uh, the, you only have seconds to grab somebody's attention in mm -hmm. your content. So whether it's a headline, your first paragraph or whatever. And I think I even read somewhere recently, you have 15 seconds to grab someone's attention mm -hmm. with your content. Now, from a blogger's point of view, that puts a lot of pressure on you because you've really got to crank out some seriously good content in the first 15 seconds. So if you read, say, the first two, three lines of the first paragraph, if you didn't grab them by then, they're gone. The first thing I would uh, address, and coming back to the videos, everything is going online. I mean, um, you're seeing even um, broadcasting companies themselves moving away from televising. They're putting everything on Netflix or you can YouTube it. There's a lot of things you can find with your computer that is kind of getting away from the television set. So I think that's going to play a big part in the whole online broadcasting and online um, live event streams as well. So that's something I would consider. The third thing is something I wanted to address with what Roland said, and that is, um, you know, when you're trying to quote unquote sell somebody on something. Now, whether you're going to, it, the difference between getting somebody to buy something from you and it, it, it kind of when, when Roland was talking, I was actually seeing the sleazy car salesman pitch. Okay, so I can remember going to a car salesman or dealership in California when I used to live in San Francisco and going to those sleazy car salesmen, asking them about a car and having them tell me, you know, how wonderful it is and you'll get all these miles out of it, blah, blah, blah. So with live broadcasts, become very astute at determining if they can trust you or not. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're going to keep your audience. So if you can keep your audience without selling them anything, and Roland, you touched on this before as well, don't sell them anything. Just give them information. And then maybe somewhere down the line, if you want to say, oh, by the way, you know, I uh, also promote this product if you're interested. So that's another way to go as well. But I think that's going to be something that's going to be very important with live broadcasts. Can, can I make a comment about the car salesman thing? It, it's, it's, <laughs> go ahead, Bill. Well, well, it's actually positive. It's something I've noticed here. I mean, we get American television here in Belize. Of course, we get all the commercials. But since the, about the 1st of November, I've noticed that Subaru is on my TV set six, seven times a night, and they never once show their product. Since November 1st, Subaru has been promoting... Um, what is it, uh, the National Parks of the U.S., Meals on Wheels, the ASPCA, and Make-A-Wish Foundation. 
and they had four commercials. And the only way you would know it was a Subaru commercial is at the very ending in writing it said, this commercial sponsored by Subaru. Oh, and that, that, yeah. that caught my attention, um, maybe because of how I perceive marketing. But it's kind of nice to see that social media etiquette or procedure moving to some of the television stations. And I was really impressed by that, that Subaru thing. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that about the sleazy car salesman. <laughs> I think that um, I, I think that that's going to start to become quite in, important in the future because big co companies want to, and in order to show their goodwill, they have to make themselves become more human as opposed to more corporate. So that's actually a good thing. I think that's a wonderful thing. And while you were speaking, Bill, I was, I was thinking about uh, the movie that I watched recently, Miracle on 34th Street, where Santa was sending everybody to a different toy store if, they didn't, if Macy's didn't have the toy. So it's kind of, it goes back that far. You know what I mean? And I, I, th I think that's going to become a thing. I really do. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that's a very interesting observation. Yeah. So, um, um, so less of selling and more of uh, building community in, in a kind of way, isn't it? Yeah. It's exactly like that. I mean, we're far more educated as consumers now. I mean, we, we can look up products and get all the data ourselves on our phones now. Um, we don't need to be sold to. We don't need to be told what's the best thing for us. I mean, we can go online and make those determinations right down to where it's it's found at the cheapest store. So I think a lot of people now are far more educated. And the first thing that we notice is that we're being sold to. And we tend to push that away and resist it. And uh, so I think people have to get a grip of uh, that concept if they're going to be successful. Oh, that's that's really uh, that's it's it's going to be interesting to watch, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, Vivek, what about you? Um, do you uh, what what I mean? I, I know that you're seeing a, a bunch of new trends in India. Um. Yeah. Um. The the trends that have uh, worldwide impact would be. Um, any YouTube video needs to have a uh, what is called as closed caption or uh, also known as subtitle. And uh, in fact, YouTube generates it automatically, but it, the automatic generated one has lots of uh, um, errors because of accent differences and whatnot, audio uh, problem, whatever. Um, why I bring that up is because worldwide audience may not be speaking English. Mm -hmm. So you create a video, you have the subtitles, then Google gives a way to auto translate it into their language. It could be Japanese, it could be Chinese, it could be something else, French, whatever. Um, so, and, and of course, when it comes to what, what happens in India, uh, it's an entirely different thing. Uh, lot, lots of Indian languages are not there on the web at all or not recognized as such by uh, YouTube, not not entirely. Uh, they are not part of that uh, automatic translation thing. Um, there could be a huge uh, market for developing that, making that possible. Um, so, th so those are the... Yeah. So yeah. uh, I I uh, I've got a few things to say about about that, and um, we've I've done a little bit of experimentation ba based on some conversations that you and I have had. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, so um, 
I, I guess to generalize where where this is going is is maybe we're going to become more global and we need yeah. to, we need to be kind of more aware of the kind of the needs of other cultures and other languages etc so to to, uh, to really really um, know that um, you know the the audience is way bigger than our just our little neck of the woods <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's going to be something that we uh, that we all need to pay attention to yeah so Barbara what about you um, are you noticing any trends that you think that um, you know I'm strike a chord for you you need to unmute So can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, well, yeah, <clears throat> but some of mine are, um, um, you know, I'm, um, things are getting better, but um, I, I went through a really awful thing for a few years. And um, so I saw during, you know, I was seeing a lot of negative things. I was seeing a lot of rotten people finishing first and not having any repercussions against them so it was almost like nice guys finish last and um, was a message i was getting and i know you know i know that's not true and um, um and one thing you know th things have helped me to come out of that but um and it, like recently, uh, I think just like um, like this group here is um, is definitely not you know um, you know they want something from you you know <laughs> and and um, also what Jay said you know on the, I guess it was on the webinar on uh, WA on Friday and he was um, I think uh, what he said was one of the was. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, he's mentioning all these hashtag different things and kindness. Um, it was, and, and, you know, it's nice to see people who are doing, being honest and kind and actually succeeding. Because what I was seeing for a while are the only people that were succeeding are horrible, rotten people. <laughs> and so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, um, it's good to see something um, uh, that that isn't really true. And um, you know, it was just a narrow little world that I was in, where I was seeing all these things happening to me and stuff. Well, they were happening; <laughs> they did happen. But anyway, um, yeah. That, that so it's really refreshing to see. Um, positive things and people out for positive things in their business and all that so uh, that's all <laughs> that, well that that um, that's a that's a really really nice observation though Barbara oh thank um, you. <laughs> um, to, um, I mean it I I would um, I would honestly say that um, it depends on the way we look at things um, it, uh, that will depend on what we what we get to see to some degree. Yeah. But I, but I honestly, I I hear you. I mean, the the, the message about uh, kindness and and um, Bill's example of what Subaru do, uh, did, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think maybe yeah. I think we are seeing some uh, some indications of of kindness, even though um, I I I hesitate to mention it, but. In the political world, it doesn't seem oh, to be that, like Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm maybe that was one of the examples. <laughs> I mean, the, the nice guy didn't, <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> well, but, but, um, but yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I've wrestled a lot with that question. I've, I've come to the conclusion that um, uh, perhaps um, the, the um, recent political things that have happened are going to make us lean more toward the kindness and the and the. Um, somebody needs somebody's running something. 
Somebody needs to turn off something. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that I think that we can uh, we can allow ourselves to get dragged down by something that we perceive as as negative, or we can choose to uh, to be part of the kindness success movement. So I I think it's a it's a a lot about choice for for ourselves. So now who somebody was waving? They wanted to say something. <laughs> I do. I mean, I I always try to look at the put the positive. Yeah. And the concept is, you know, it's like everyone wants to go to the beach. Everyone wants to get their foot wet or their feet wet or get in the waves. They want to be part of the movement, the flow of the ocean. And then there are the oil slicks that people are trying to avoid. So I look at it like the, uh, the advertisers and the marketers and the salespeople trying to push stuff on us is the oil in the ocean. But, you know, not all of the ocean is is tainted with oil slicks. So what we have is an opportunity to stand out as the clean and as the clean surf. Uh, what's going to distinguish us from other people and other marketers is that we are not an oil slick. We, we are not trying to sell. So we are going to be able to distinguish ourselves by being different in a positive way. And that's, and that's really how people are going to see us. They're going to look at us and say, I'm not sure what they're selling, but by golly, I really like to watch the show, or I really like his commercials, or I really, he's a he's cool on online, and uh, I really appreciate the things that she says. You know, when you have that, that's the start of something good, and that's part of the clean wave. So it's not a matter of the rest of the world for, forces us to join them. It gives us an opportunity to stand out. To stand out, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that um, it like like as far as if you can sell somebody something and still really help them because if if your motives are right, you know, um, you can say this real you sell part, if you only um, are uh, delivering products uh, that you believe in, then your motives would be good and you wouldn't try to sell somebody something they didn't need and all that you know so that that i was for what happened to me was not even anything to do with sales or anything but like personal junk and and and, and in that world it was like you know these bad people are just getting old. they're doing horrible things and i just really was dying to see some karma coming around <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> in a big way <laughs> so anyway that yeah it was more um that type of thing mm -hmm. but but it really did affect my whole outlook for, for a while and and every time i hear something good like you know the things here and like jace you know i mean they're so positive you know mm -hmm. that it, that it's really like good <laughs> it's uplifting isn't it yeah yeah very much <laughs> right on so bill i think you were waving too yeah i just wanted to kind of encourage people not to get discouraged by the observation that that barbara made i mean there's a lot of people out there that maybe aren't um of great integrity but i kind of compare social media to racing and ultimately we're in a marathon but we're running a series of short sprints. Every time you put something on, on the internet, it's, it's a sprint. So I think when we see some of these people that are not very uh, full of integrity winning, I think they might be winning a sprint, but I don't think they're ultimately winning the marathon. Well, it's a good way to put it, Bill. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Vivek, did I see you waving that you wanted to say something? No? Okay. So, I mean, we're, we are seeing some trends that um, are, are worthy of our attention. 
And uh, so I, what I was wondering if uh, we have, oh goodness, we're at an hour again. <laughs> but um, uh, perhaps just before we sort of close, did anybody have something they would like to share in terms of where they uh, where they want to place their focus or their attention for the coming year i mean i i think our conversation here is uh, indicative of that of our everybody's answer to that question but i just wondered whether anybody had uh, uh something that they they uh, want to really focus on a little bit more for the coming year and by the way, I was I was really uh, kind of uh, I I have to go back and ask Vivek uh, when you wrote the uh, the comment in the comment stream here when you want to make God laugh narr narrate your plan I really I had I was of two minds as to what that means mm -hmm. uh, first of all I thought now so are we, do we want to make god laugh because he's laughing at us or do we want to make god <laughs> uh, uh, do we want to make god smile because he's because he's uh supporting us and really happy with the 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 direction we're taking so i i looked at that statement and i couldn't decide what you meant um i was actually referring to a known statement i think uh, bill actually corrected me uh, last part of that but then yeah what i actually meant was if you kind of if you write a plan in stone if you carve it on a stone slab mm -hmm. then it is going to fail <laughs> Your plan has to be flexible. Your plan has to be uh, dynamic. It needs to ah. see what, what is working and then change accordingly. Be able so, to adjust whenever it's uh, when whenever it looks uh, like the right thing to do. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I agree with that one, not 100%. <laughs> and I apologize, we wake. I was, certainly wasn't trying to correct what you said. I was just trying to put it, uh, trying to put words to my interpretation of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, of it, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so now we know what that means. Don't write it in stone. Um, um, God might think that's a silly thing to do. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what about others? Do uh, do you have anything that um, you feel as though you'd really like to focus on over and above everything that we've been talking about? And anything on the specific um, in um, way? Because I'm hoping that some people may be watching this and thinking they would like to know more about um, the participants here. <laughs> If we know kind of what direction or a new direction or something, it might um, might encourage people to uh, get more connected. I will I will add this one thing because it's it's the underlying current of everything I do, and that is if it doesn't make you happy, you're probably in the wrong vein. You're probably on the wrong road, and it's you have to be happy. You have to be expanding into your joy. And if you find something that you can do that in, I don't care if it is sales, you're going to be you're going to be successful at it because you're expanding into your joy. So if if you're a car salesman, no problem. Be a great car salesman and help people fit into the right vehicle for their for their needs. You know, there's always a way to express joyfully. Just because you're a car salesman does not condemn you in the marketing uh, world. And, okay, uh, so you're expanding into your joy, and exactly. uh, your joy right now is this wonderful plug-in that's going to make our lives uh, better. I think so, because if I succeed in making this happen, it's going to open the doors for a lot of people to do live streaming from their websites for low, low cost, which has always been my, my, uh, my 
primary goal is to help people get online and promote their business. Mm -hmm. So that all fits in. But the idea is expand into your joy, whatever it is. Right. Whatever it is, expand with your joy. Right on. Anybody else have uh, a specific uh, direction, Bill? Uh, my my direction actually isn't going to change that much. I want to continue being helpful to uh, people that want to make a move to Belize by providing them, you know, the the non sugar coated side of the story. Mm -hmm. um, I am looking forward to hopefully getting residency this year, where I can start building a platform, mm. uh, or I can start building a product page of things to sell and actually make money, not so much to enrich in myself but to give me the ability to maybe buy more internet so i can i can do more stuff in that helpful area but another thing i've been really thinking of and i don't meditate uh, per se but every afternoon i uh, lay down for a nap and i think about things for 20 minutes or a half hour before i fall asleep and one of the personal things that I really want to try this year is to do something for the local children at Christmas next year. But in thinking about it, I don't want it to be something that's kind of a slap in the face to parents who can't afford to give their child a gift. So I, I really got to find some local people to help me with that. Um, also, I can't afford to put a lot of money into it, so I need to... Uh, I need to find out what people here would really benefit from, but that's something I, I really feel strongly about this year, um, seeing how many children go without, and uh, is there not something that I could use my social media following uh, to improve that situation? All right, on. Well, and the, the, um, the best way to approach that is exactly what you said, getting other people to help you and to to be finding out what what um what would what their needs are from them but uh, yeah right on so uh I I, see, um, alana you uh, you're unmuted so i think you've got something uh, there yeah well i just wanted to talk to bill for a second because while he was speaking you know i know you were talking about trying to do something for the children that it doesn't you know offend the parents or anything and I was wondering if perhaps starting up like a chorus group for the kids or something to sing Christmas carols or something around that because it's voluntary it doesn't cost anything it's a way to get a bunch of people to together and they will learn something and singing is very uplifting so I thought that might be helpful yeah that's a that's a good idea and something worth exploring my head is in kind of a different yeah. space but yeah that's that's maybe a good start I, I sure would agree with you there, Alana. You know, I don't know if you know this about me, but um, I'm a, a very active member of a very large community choir. So, <laughs> and I think that's great because I wish that you know that might be something I explore this year too. Um, is you know perhaps getting out and doing more volunteer type work. But from a business point of view, my motto this year is going to be feel the fear and do it anyway, because touching on what Roland said, expand into your joy, I have realized that I really like writing, I really like research, I really like finding out about new things. So I think I'm in the right business, and I'm hoping that I can behave my way to success, as corny as that may sound. So that's kind of where I'm going. Hey, well, Dylan. That's a really nice phrase. Behave my way into success. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I wanted to comment on Bill's concept. You, uh, I wonder, and I don't have an answer to this question as I laminated over the top of what you're doing, but it's like the uh, teach the people how to fish type of thing. If, you, if you're wanting to do something for the kids, what uh, Alana was saying, get them in a choir or get them involved. The, the key word is involved. And I think that if you're doing something that teaches the kids how to give, that would be one step beyond. And uh, it would bring the joy and teach them how to give to each other and to their parents and to other people. And that way you're, you're actually teaching them how to fish, so to speak. And so I think that maybe you can expand into the concept 
by giving them something that they could take on to the next generation. That would be a very interesting. Right on. So, um, um, Vivek, what, 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 what are your plans for the, for the coming year? Or, or are you still sort of chewing on that? Um, yes, a bit chewing, but uh, I do see a lot of training opportunities. Uh, would be um, putting more emphasis on how I can train uh, startups. A uh, lot of starts of startups happening here, and uh, uh, that's one thing which I would like to concentrate on. Um, I might get into education <laughs> itself. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's my plan. I, and I, I also am in in the very short term. I would be creating a short uh, tutorial about what I just uh, talked about, the subtitles and all that, uh, how you can use it, how you can enhance it. And uh, yeah, it, it, it might, I just stumbled upon this uh, article. I don't know how, how, how true universities, Harvard and uh, I think the other one was uh, uh, MIT. They have been sued for not uh, sued um, as in they, they have been sued for not uh, using the subtitles properly. Oh, <laughs> someone has sued them, uh, saying that uh, you are not uh, you are you are discriminating against the disabled people uh, because the subtitles uh, will be used by uh, hearing impaired uh, people to read. So someone has sued these uh, institutions, saying that you have to take care of these uh, subtitles and so on, otherwise. So that that that's an interesting story, but uh, yeah, really, yeah. So um, and um, Roland, um, thank you for alerting me that um, I guess I I've not been <laughs> I didn't refresh my comments out here. So I see that uh, Paul Murray is is out um, in the audience adding comments. Thank you, Paul, and he says 2017 will be. A, exploring chatbots mm -hmm. so um so uh, um uh, paul thank you very much for for um being out there and observing and looking in and participating because this is uh uh also very helpful to us to uh, to have yeah uh, uh, for those, those yeah for those who do not know what a chatbot is a quick one a good example is okay google on your phone mm -hmm. that's a chatbot yes well and i um I, I think i'll i'll hold off until we're we've stopped broadcasting but i'm i'm doing an experiment right now which i'll tell you about that relates to that so <laughs> we're all on the same way right <laughs> so so, uh, Barbara, anything in particular that you're going to be concentrating on this year? I know you uh, you're you're studying SEO and you're thinking uh, uh, in that direction. Anything over and above that? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I've been considering um, going to one of these uh, part. Well, they have part-time online boot camps, and code boot camps and um, um, learning that and adding that to my business, mm -hmm. more development stuff, you know, um, with coding. I, I like I like software, so that's, you know, uh -huh. would be real interesting to me. That's what they're learning in the schools here in Canada. They've introduced coding as part of the, um, the, the curriculum. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> right on. So a continuation of your learning for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just, I do, that's what I do. Cause I look back, 
I mean, I've been going to school forever <laughs> and I'm and I'm always wanting to learn stuff. So, you know, that seems to be the next thing I'm looking at. You know, I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but because um, uh, I still I want to get this business um, going, too. So that would be my first priority. <laughs> right on. So apparently coding has replaced cursive. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that hand? It's cursive handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting. I know that uh, I might share uh, you all with you all what my uh, sort of uh, I've got two things that I've been thinking about. One of them certainly is um, doing way more. Uh, um, from my website as opposed to uh, out on the social networks and so forth. And um, I have been really uh, focusing on uh, enhancing and, sim and cl uh, cleaning up a website, but um, that will be a, a continuation for me. But the other thing is that um, I've decided that I want to do some more interviewing of um, solopreneurs. So uh, sometimes people find it very difficult, solopreneurs especially, find it very difficult to uh, talk about themselves uh, from a marketing perspective. But if somebody else is asking them all the right questions, uh, it becomes much easier for them. And so um, I belong to a few organizations here in town um, that where I'll be sort of offering to do some interviews uh, for solopreneurs, and then they get to use it in whatever way they they wish. And uh, I I just think that um, it's it's um, it will be helpful for people to um, you know step into that uh, that online world because there are a lot of people out there who find it difficult, and uh, they need to uh, they need to step in in a guided and supported and uh, safe way. So I, I hope that's uh, going to be something that people will find useful. So I think we are, um, we are, <laughs> we're at 20 minutes uh, past the hour. So I think that I'm going to, um, to um, suggest that we close now and um, with the, um, a reminder to people out there on the um, outside watching and looking in to uh, please do uh, become more acquainted with uh, the participants here and uh, if we can find ways to uh, to help you uh, where we're here that's what we're here for is to um, to help people sort of become successful and uh, in doing that it's really working Expanding our way into joy, as uh, as uh, Roland says. I mean, that's a that's a really great um, way for us to uh, to begin uh, the new year on 2017. So, this is Lowell Ann signing off. I hope that we'll see you um, very frequently in the new year. So bye for now, and thanks to my uh, green room participants today. Lovely to have you.